Hello and welcome to this week's Politico Junkies. I'm Rachel Smolkin, joined today by John Allen, new on the White House beat, and Jake Sherman, Hill reporter extraordinaire, I think is now your official title, right? Uh, a lot of news coming out because there's no longer any such thing as a slow summer news day. The canceling of the summit between President Obama and Putin out this morning, what do you make of it? Well, I think uh, the president was getting a lot of pressure to uh, respond to Russia's handling of the Edward Snowden affair. Uh, he had people calling on him to do everything from cancel this meeting to cancel the American presence at the Olympics uh, coming up. And so uh, I think he was pushed into a corner where he had to take one of the, the least bad options. Uh, at the end of the day, ca canceling a meeting with Putin uh, is neither uh, a major uh, obstacle in the relationship nor something that uh, that hurts Putin in any way. It's not like he canceled a meeting with the president of Cambodia, who really needs that meeting with the United States to uh, to look good. Um, it certainly does escalate the tensions, though, that have been on the rise for some time, and the White House very specifically mentioned Edward Snowden in that statement today. It, it's a measured step. Uh, it is uh, one of the options that Obama had, and probably one of the least damaging ones. Look, we, uh, you know, in the United States passed the Magnitsky Act uh, to crack down on human rights abusers in Russia. They countered uh, by banning U.S. adoptions of Russian citizens. But at the end of the day, those are very small issues compared to uh, trying to make sure that Iran doesn't get a nuke, uh, neutralizing North Korea's nuclear ambitions, uh, the, the proxy war going on in Syria, and uh, the United States' need for a northern distribution network uh, to, to withdraw supplies from Afghanistan that runs right through Russia, at least the rails do, uh, that's something that you'd be looking forward to at the end of this year, perhaps 2014. Uh, these are all major, major issues, and none of them would seem to be affected by uh, the cancellation of a meeting. Jake, I know the Hill is not here, Congress is all gone, but are you hearing anything in terms of reaction so far to the cancellation? I think what John said is right. It, it was the least uh, bad option. And the problem was the walls were closing in on him from Capitol Hill for members of his own party who were calling for action. I mean, members of his own party were saying he needed to respond to Russia in some way, most notably by not showing up at the Olympics. So this was not something where he could hide and run behind people of his own party who agreed with him or who thought he should do nothing. So it was a step he kind of needed to take. And will it be enough of a step? Will this satisfy that, that <laughs> desire to do something or will there be calls for more? I think there, there, there will probably be calls for more. There are always calls for more for members of, on Capitol Hill. <laughs> there's there's, 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 there's nothing that will yeah. satisfy John McCain and Lindsey Graham's uh, desire to escalate uh, in foreign policy. I, 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 think <laughs> that, I think it'll be, people will see it as a good first step but uh, something that needs to continue. And it should be noted that I think Russia is sending two representatives to the United States for talks this or next week. So I think while the tensions are high, I, I think there's going to be back-channel communication to kind of soften that a little bit. And besides, there's not, not uh, any clear evidence that Obama meeting with Putin is ever uh, productive for that relationship. They seem to really genuinely dislike each other and be uncomfortable around each other. And Putin's always uh, trying to make Obama look bad. So uh, I don't know that the president really probably felt like he needed to spend a lot of time with Putin. Well, turning to other issues that the president hopes to spend a little more time on, uh, immigration and Obamacare, what are you watching for while Congress is out? I think, the, the as you said, immigration, the health care law, the fiscal fights that are coming up in September are going to be top of the agenda. Starting off with immigration, over the next couple of weeks, I think we'll see a huge, uh, some, some sign about how immigration will play when Congress comes back in September. If members of Congress are home and get a lot of flack um, for supporting immigration reform or for not supporting immigration reform, that will kind of tell a lot about how the issue will progress in the coming weeks. Obviously, the health care law, uh, Republicans have been focused for 40 times on repealing or otherwise neutering the health care law by cutting off funding streams. John Boehner said he was going to do more votes in the fall to target the law. He thinks that Democrats are beginning to support some of these measures, and he sees a political opening. Now, that dovetails into the, the government funding fight, which begins in September, September 30th, um, when the, the government runs out of money because a, a group of Republicans want to shut down the government to defund the health care law, uh, a strategy not a lot of Republicans agree with, but John Boehner is trying to soften that by saying, here's some other votes to repeal the health care well, law. These really, are going nowhere either. That could really backfire on the, re <coughs> the Republican Party if they're seen as, as trying to uh, be obstructionist in that way and they get blamed for an actual shutdown of the government, right? So they have yeah. to 
if you there's that down. balance of appealing to the base versus looking yeah. like you're not doing anything to serve the people. In the I think there are a lot of a lot of establishment Republicans and strategists in the Republican Party who think that. Uh, shutting down the entire federal government, all of the services that everybody gets uh, over what ultimately is insurance for a small slice of the American public uh, will backfire. Not only that, you look at the timing of these two things. The government runs out of money September 30th. The first day to sign up for the new health care law is October 1st. Just fast forward, for, as, a, as an editor, Rachel, think about, uh, think about the, uh, the big headlines on Politico and other major news outlets of these two things happening at the exact same time. It would be very hard to uh, paint the Obamacare fight as anything other than what we just called it, shutting down the entire government over this small slice. And, and right after that is the debt ceiling. The debt ceiling will need to be lifted sometime between October and January. So you have these, all these issues kind of like dominoes. Right. And we don't have an exact date no. on that yet because we're waiting to see when they, they do their emergency right. maneuvers and all the things that could keep it uh, a little further down the line. Right. I think the, the government has more revenue than it's had in, in many years. So that's kind of prolonged the, the, the debt ceiling. Uh, but John Boehner in a closed meeting to his top advisors and aides the other day recently said that the only way Republicans could lose the majority is by shutting down the government. So I think Republican leadership is really cognizant that this is, uh, they're heading down a path that is, could result in them losing mm -hmm. the majority. Right, and John, I know you're just getting going on the White House beat, but what are you hearing about White House plans for messaging, either for the fiscal fights or <laughs> Obamacare or anything else? They've got a, a summer recess now to contend with. Look, I mean, I think it's a, it's a hard thing for the president right now because you've seen uh, his approval rating slip and his greatest strength has always been uh, his personal popularity, that he's able to uh, make people feel good about him. And, and that's not there anymore. And I think they're struggling to find a message. I mean, we see him uh, this week talking about housing. We see him at other times talking about jobs and the economy uh, well, on separate he went issues on, in housing. And the Leno show, of uh, course. Right, and he went on Jay Leno last night. Uh, and, and that was uh, looked at, I think, by a lot of people, including Isaac uh, DeVere, my colleague uh, covering the White House, uh, as uh, a chance to try to communicate to middle America. Uh, in a way that he may not have uh, more recently. So uh, I think they're looking for the right tack to take right now in terms of uh, communicating a message and figuring out what that message should be. That said, I think they feel very strong uh, in terms of uh, their ability to watch the Republicans implode because they've done that time and again. They've got, again, we were talking about the balance before for the White House, they have to balance between probably the desire to watch the Republicans implode, but really also to push forward on immigration, the signature domestic issue right now, and Obamacare, which they want to see implemented successfully. Well, I guess the question would be for Jake, I mean, is, is there a path through the House for immigration reform? For, through, for some sort of immigration reform, sure. I think there's some sort of path for small pieces of legislation that could could make their way through the House of Representatives and eventually get negotiated with the Senate for a big compromise. But there's even some movement within the conservative wing of the Republican Party to not even get to that negotiation. Right, because they don't about. want to go into conference committee at all, right? Because, because they see them getting jammed, right. A, right. And I think that's, that's what John Boehner has to contend with when he comes back. And it's very likely, despite the wishes of, of Chuck Schumer and, and some of the re Republicans who dealt with this issue and the White House. I mean, you have to remember, President Obama wanted this signed by August. There's a significant chance that this doesn't get done until March. I mean, we have these huge fiscal issues, and, and we've seen how these things consume Washington. I just don't think there'll be the brain share for immigration to happen before the end of the year. If ever. I mean, right. you, know, you say in March. I mean, once you get into March of a midterm election year, uh, generally speaking, you're very much into the political season and it makes it that much harder to get things done. Folks who uh, hadn't f faced the voters in a while are starting to think about facing them again, uh, what, less willing to take risks, particularly uh, in, in competitive House seats, th the few of those that exist. But that's well, good for some, some Republicans. Some Republican thinking that they might actually be in a better position after the midterm elections to deal with immigration, that that might be a Their form favorable. of immigration reform, right. potentially. I mean, Republicans privately will say that they think they could gain seats in the House of Representatives, right. uh, that there are more Democrats sitting in seats that Mitt Romney won than the other way around. What the White House would benefit from is if the primary count, if all the primaries were held on one day instead <laughs> of across the year, because if you got past Republican primaries and you had Republican nominees uh, in Congress, then they would have a lot more flexibility uh, to vote for uh, a more comprehensive immigration reform law without worrying about losing to Democrats. Uh, but if you do it before a primary, 
primary opponents can crop up or ones who exist can start to exploit that issue. But the reason that most of these Republicans don't want immigration reform is because their primary political concern is a primary, right? right. And, they, and they are going to be tacking to the right. Even if they say that they want this immigration, they want a pathway to citizenship, they want a big, comprehensive, bold bill, they're not, a lot of them aren't just simply aren't going to be able to swallow it. And if you have a September primary, it means the, the, the public policy season is, is long gone. quickly ending right now. President Obama speaks today to military families about the sequester. Jake, any hope at all that the sequester is not here to stay or is this just with us for the foreseeable future? It looks like it's with us for now, but there are a group of Republicans and Democrats in the Senate talking about a big deal to, to blunt the sequester cuts, to replace them, to reconfigure them somehow. But in the House of Representatives, Republicans want to replace the sequester cuts with entitlement changes and entitlement cuts, which is generally a non-starter for the President and Senate Democrats and even some Senate Republicans. So there's no clear pathway out of the sequester, although there's definitely movement to try to blunt or fix the sequester cuts. And, and would the big deal you're talking about be just the sequester, or would they roll in funding the government and maybe mm. even a debt ceiling deal? As They'd like to do that. <laughs> They'd certainly like They'd to. They'd do a really yeah. big deal. Yeah. And let's remember, I mean, the, you know, they talk about a big deal. A lot of the original grand bargain, at least in terms of the, the numbers that you're talking about, has already been implemented through mm -hmm. a series of deals over the years, including the one that created the sequester, the one from August of 2011. Uh, House Republicans, certainly the conservatives uh, among House Republicans and also Senate Republicans who are conservatives, looked at that as a victory. Uh, oh, no, and so exactly. rewriting rewriting uh, the past grand bargain for a new grand bargain that undoes the spending cuts that they feel like they won on is kind of a non-starter for them. Uh, maybe there's some uh, mix that could be come up with by a bipartisan group, but we haven't seen that yet. The group of Republican senators that have been meeting with the president on budget issues uh, is still talking uh, at the concept level is the way that they put it. Uh, so they're really not talking turkey. They don't have any uh, actual... Uh, policy to exchange with each other, and uh, obviously the, the the budget issues are coming up as soon as they get back from August. So August, a key month on many, many issues. We'll be bringing all the news in the next month and many more months to you on Politico.com. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Junkies.